Hello again. This video continues straight on from part one of two of this uh, five torch comparison recorded on four scopes. And again, straight away, be aware, I haven't masked the image from the DS3550 at the start or the DS3570 later because there's no pest control footage in this video. This is purely recording five different torches on four different scopes across the two videos, of course. This is the DS3550 again. 300 meters right okay so this is the ludicrous lumens wraith i can focus the beam oh and you can see the vixels if i loosen the clamp slightly rotate it around because i'm ocd and i like it to be square tighten the clamp up back the beam off a bit nicely zooms things yep so that's the 300 meter telegraph pole. Uh, maybe focus it a bit more. You can focus this as much as you want. Okay, and over to the, to the 500 meter tree. And again, there are stars showing. That tree's 500 meters. And of course, some, anything closer, you just turn the power down or flare the uh, torch out and if I flare the torch head out it fills the screen fills the field of view of the DS3550 on base mag okay okay recording on the height micro cheetah you can see the difference in the field of view it's just align things a bit better there we go there's the 300 meter telegraph pole massive difference in the field of view We've got the tree line, the 500 meters there. I'll focus things down. You really can highlight them with this uh, torch. Look it out a bit. Oh yeah, there's the 300 meter telegraph pole. Okay. You can see the massive difference in the field of view in the cheetah from the two paths. Well, I think it's slightly greater than even the um, Pulsar C50 on base mag. Okay, recording again on the Pulsar. That's the 300 metre telegraph pole. This is with the Ludicrous Lumens Wraith. I can focus that beam, concentrate it until you see the Vixels. Back it off. If you back it off, it doesn't feel the field of view. So probably a similar field of view to the Cheetah, maybe not quite as wide angle though. Okay, so that's the 300 meter telegraph pole. It's not as bright as I expected. Hold on, let's just check the brightness is still on full. Yes, it is. And on to the 500 meter tree. Dagnam it. I missed the chance here to uh, focus the beam in a bit tighter and see how bright I could get it on the 500 meter tree without seeing the vixels. Now the turn of the PARD DS3570 again, and obviously imagine this masked so you can only see the circular view because I don't see anything out with the ends of the stadia uh, while aiming. So here I concentrate the wraith in, you can see the vixels, then I back it off and I'm a <laughs> I then realise how misaligned it is. So I've uh, lined it up a bit there and uh, you can just see the grid of the vixels faintly. Then I pan across and upwards to the right, to the ridge line and the 500 meter tree. And sorry, no live commentary on this one. I must have the uh, audio deactivated on the DS3570RF. Here I've got the wraith beam fully widened out and I'm just uh, tweaking the alignment slightly to uh, coincide with the scope. Here's the uh, Night Sibber Wraith and the Night Sibber Wraith Light from Andy at Ludicrous Lumens. Thanks again for your help, Andy, with these. The clamps you can see are his very clever, lightweight, but very strong 3D printed, they're sort of semi-flexible brackets. The only hiccup when I was reviewing the Wraith Light is I used the same pill. So I took off the, uh, the front part of the lens, unscrewed the pill itself, swapped it across, reassembled everything. And I think I might have crossed the threads on the head of the wraith light so th when i was unscrewing the lens clockwise to concentrate the beam and then anti-clockwise to spread the beam it kept 
moving off centre, so off target if you like. So I think I might have cross threaded it, so my apologies for that. But they're both excellent torches, very, very powerful, and they also, especially the Wraith Light, was really good at spreading the beam very wide. As you'll have already seen from my video a month ago, where I compared the Cheetah C32 FRL and Pard DS3550 RF by day and then night, you'll have seen that the Wraith Light, the beam, really did spread out to fill even the wide angle view of the Cheetah, as well as fo focusing it in nice and tightly for long range use. Okay, recording again on the Pard DS3550. Now, I have discovered, although the Ludicrous Lumens Wraith Light has great focus, you can concentrate the beam, or you can widen the beam right out. There's a little bit of misalignment in the sense that once you concentrate the beam, you've got to sort of redirect it a bit, like so. But you can see it's nicely illuminating the whole of that uh, telegraph pole at 300 meters. If I Focus it in a bit and redirect at the same point, same time to keep the base of the telegraph pole on screen. You can see that works, and then you can back it off to fill it to uh, fill the whole field of view. Redirect over to the right. There's the 500 meter tree. Let's see how well I can illuminate that. Yep, that's very bright. Okay, can't quite see the grid of the pixels, but very nearly. Just a quick reminder here that I'm seeing through the cheetah slightly sepia tinged image on the display that doesn't come through on the recording. That's recording with the back it off. You see it fills, almost fills the field of view. Back it off a bit more, yes. So the ludicrous lens right light and you back it right off does fill the field of view and when you focus it in so I've got to realign it and do I think once here and you can see it very capably eliminates that it's a square grid of the pixel chip so I'm back it up a bit yeah. that's very nice and have a look at me three at five hundred meters yeah it's very nice as well cool Recording on the pulsar, there's the telegraph pole at 300 meters, and realign it a little bit. You see that it fills the field of view of the C50, manipulate it a bit, or focus it in. You can concentrate it right down and brighten things up right up to daylight. Okay. And that's the 300 meter telegraph. If I look over to the tree over there, it makes the tree, and I can still see the stars in the background, which are really not, not visible to, with the naked eye on the horizon like that. I can see them high overhead, but not that low. If I back it off, realign it, you can see 500 meter trees nicely illuminated. Okay. Here we're back on the fourth scope, the part DS3570 RF, and you can straight away see it's got a much narrower field of view from, from the other scopes. Although obviously, again, I've not masked the image to the circular view you get through looking through the eyepiece. So we've got the Wraith light on again, first at, on the 330 meter telegraph pole, including focusing the beam right in on it, and then widening back out. And over to the right, and looking at the 500 meter tree on the ridge line, pretty clear. And you, again, you can have the beam wide enough to f completely fill the field of view, or narrow enough focused to make things very bright indeed. Morning, all. I'm hoping to get this video out today, but uh, Bruce has lent me another IR torch, the Sirius XTL from IR Light Builds by Ian Cyril. And uh, yeah, I'm out at 2.30 in the morning just to record with that torch. The conditions are apparently slightly misty, I can't really tell yet. 
I can barely see the horizon. It's so dark. Um, and uh, let's just see how this torch performs through all four scopes. Okay. I uh, pulled out the Griffin thermal spotter and laser rangefinder. Spotted a deer on the left bank, but uh, was having a little bit of trouble ranging it. Eventually got it at 90 meters, but uh, there's a fair bit of sea mist. So although I could see the deer very clearly, the laser rangefinder had a little bit of an issue picking it up. Interesting heat in those uh, tractor ruts, and I couldn't quite range the 300 meter telegraph pole. Got it in the end at 358, just, just past it. And I looked to the ridge line to my right and I couldn't range that tree at 500 meters at all through the mist. But I managed to range the house at 416 meters, same as the other day. So we've got the Sirius XTL hit here. I just got it finally uh, focused at shortish range, sort of less than 50 meters. And then I narrowed down the beam to uh, as a little test focus. And sure enough, it does white out the PARD DS3550 RF at, sh at close range. Back it off again. Have a quick look around for that deer, but no sign. And then as I look further afield, uh, out to the 330 meter telegraph pole, and you can see the sea mist coming in from the left, left to right. There's the telegraph pole, and I think, well, what the hell, I'll have a go at ranging it with the DS35, and it gets it. There we have it, 300 meters, 320, so brilliant. And then over to the right, onto the distant ridge line, you can see the tree at 500 meters. It's a heck of a lot of sea mist coming in now, and I focus the beam down again, you can see it's illuminating quite a lot in the foreground, but I focus the beam down again on the 500 meter tree. And yep, you can see it. this whites out the part here and just also reveals just how much mist is coming in left to right over my shoulder. That torch performs very well indeed. Okay, recording now on the height micro cheetah. Again, you can see the mist coming from the left. There's the same part as Christ. And struggling to range the mist. I concentrate the beam. Okay. Broaden the beam out and I can widen fill much of the field of view of the cheetah. Okay, it's quite cool. Distant trees, but straight to be a bit. Okay. So that's the 500 meter tree. There we go. So you can see the cheetah's image is softer. Very nice image, that. Very toned down. It's not in your face at all. Twentieth attempt. This is me recording on the uh, Bullsar C50. There's the pampas grass. That telegraph pole is very clear, illuminated by the Sirius XTL. That's at 300, 330 meters. And let's just tighten up the beam. There we go. So you can see the, the mist coming from the left. Broaden it out. Very nice image. And tree is 500 meters. Tighten the beam up a bit. Eliminate it a bit more. There we go. Nice and clear. of 400, 420 meters. Okay, so that's a nice image. Through the Pulsar C50. Widen it out a bit. And 
we are getting a bit of reflection back off the mist, but that's not a nice image. So here we have the PAD DS3570 RF and its corresponding narrow field of view, illuminated by the Sirius XTL. The PAD was able to range the uh, telegraph pole at 330 metres. I've tried concentrating the beam here and adjusting it, but uh, excuse my uh, cack handedness get being slightly uh, off centre here. Let misaligned slightly. And there's a bit of white out with the Sirius XTL at full strength. Then I pan over to the right, the 500 meter tree line on the ridge. Range it, will it, will it, the 500 meters? Yes, 500 meters, 504. Well done, the S3570. So the illumination's a bit softer here, but I don't think I've got it quite in full strength, but that looks decent. You can see at the end of this session with the thermal spotter, you can just make out either the head or the ears of the deer 300 and odd meters away. But at no point in, did I, on any of those four digital scopes did I see any kind of eye shine or did I see them moving around. So it just goes to show the power of the thermal spotter. It uh, beats night vision hand, hands down when it comes to uh, spotting to save you relying on eye shine when animals are uh, not looking at you or not, not being obvious. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've made it to the end of both videos. And thanks very much to Trevor for the loan of the Solaris SRX V2 VCSEL torch. Thanks also to Andy of Ludicrous Lumens for providing the Night Saber Wraith and Night Saber Wraith light and mounts. And thanks also to Ian Cyril right at the end for the loan of the Sirius XTL, which I believe Bruce has now bought off him. <laughs> Brilliant. Lots of interesting torches here, viewed independently through lots of different scopes. So hope that's been interesting for you. And of course, don't forget to buy your tickets for February's British Shooting Show. See you all there. Thanks for watching. Cheers.